Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we will turn our focus towards the third tier of the hierarchy of objectives which we identified as corporate objectives. Now remember that the corporate objectives are your short term targets that the business sets itself. It should be in line with the long term aim of the business and the mission statement as discussed in the last video and you will periodically have to change your objective depending on either the external environment or upon completion of one objective of the business. So let's go right into it. Now we already know that businesses that start up would face a lot of problems, right? These are young entrepreneurs, young businesses, and they have problems that they are just trying to find their way through it in the early days. Problems such as where's the capital coming from? Where are we going to find our finance? Do we have a strong enough business plan to convince people? Do we have the right management skills to perform what we expect ourselves to do? Where would we find the right kind of labor? Also things like where are our customers coming from? Okay. How are we going to research all of that? Those are all things that are still unsure for a business. It's, it's still very early days. And since it's still new to them, they're still figuring out whether the market is responding positively to them. Are the customers liking their product? Do we still need to continue developing our product? In those uncertain days, a viable option or a viable objective for a business would be to simply survive. Okay, let's go through this early stage. Let's get the money in by selling the product. Let's try to convince the consumer with being as efficient as possible, keeping your expenses at a minimum and still trying to have an impact. Of course, that's easier said than done, but that is what the business has to do. And all businesses have to go through an initial pay phase of survival. It will be a short term objective for a business. Of course, it will eventually get out of this once the business sees an upturn in its trends and when the company starts to see the increase in their sales. So one very clear understandable objective is that of survival. Now survival is also an objective which a business would act on if the economic conditions are not in the favor. Okay? When we say not favorable com economic conditions, we mean a situation of recession. Okay? When things are looking bad, uh, inflation is going up, Things are getting more expensive, living standards are going down, people are getting unemployed. So when already people are not making the same amount of income when they're seeing a decrease in their spending powers, of course, that's not the time that you can think of expanding or making more products and convincing more customers through promotion. That's where you simply need to get through this patchy phase. And once you're through it, once the economic situation turns up, that's again when you can change your objective to something like profit maximization, which is our next business objective. And you will remember from our first class together where we discussed what defines a business and we defined five steps that collectively form the explanation of the business. And the last of those was that a company or a business is something, an entity that sells their product or has an objective of making a profit. So profit maximization becomes an understandable objective for any business. That's what they're in it for. That's what their eventual goal is. And when we talk about profit maximization, I want to take you back to a simple equation that really is a very useful way of understanding what profit maximization is. We know prof in order to calculate profit, you take your sales, which is your earnings, and you subtract all the costs that occurred in conducting all the business activities. Now, the idea of profit maximization is that as a business, you should try to increase your sales as much as possible. Because the more you increase your sales, the higher your profit gets by the same proportion. At the same time, what you should also look to do is increase your cost because an increase in cost will also see an increase in profits. So cost is inversely related to profit and sales is directly related. So what a company has to do when they have an objective of increasing profit is simply look to increase ways of, in look ways of decreasing the cost. For example, finding cheaper labor, cheaper raw material maybe, uh, cheaper tools, but that might come at a cost. 
which is quality, of course. But that's exactly the kind of challenge businesses have to overcome. In terms of sales, there's two things to sales. Either you make things cheaper, so people will buy more, or simply make them better. Both ways will lead to an increase in sales, which will have an increase in profit. And that's what the businesses are looking for when they're looking at profit maximization. Now, when you do become a profit maximizing business, you're in a particular industry, you're doing well, people like you, uh, the money's raining in, you won't be the only one who has the idea. So everybody around you will be like, hey, if these guys can do it, if this business can do it, so can we. So you'll see a lot of competition entering your space. So things are going to get challenging. And in the end, what you're going to face is a lot of pressure. Everybody will be vying for the same resources, same labor, capital, land, and your competitors are not going to make it easy for you. Because if you can make a profit, they will try to get a piece of the action. And sometimes it's understandable for a business to let go of the objective of profit maximization because sometimes you just want to attract the customers. You simply want to build a customer base. And in order to build that customer base, in order to increase your share of the market, you will need to possibly reduce the prices of your product. That may mean a reduction in profits momentarily for a short time. But once you have enough customers convinced of your product, they become your loyal customers. Then eventually you can increase the price and look to increase the profit as well. That is profit maximization. Now, the third business objective, the corporate objective, is that of growth, also known as expansion. Okay? Now, this is when the company believes that there are advantages in being large, a big business. And when I say big and large businesses, and whenever you hear the term growth, I want you to think about all the resources of a business. Land, labor, capital, and enterprise, which you will remember from our earlier classes. And the idea is, if you can get more land, if you can get more and better labor, if you can get more and better machines, and of course more money, and if you can get better ideas, what it leads to is an increase in your output level. Because you're able to produce more, you have a larger capacity to produce. And the more resources you have, the more you're able to produce, the more you'll be able to market and sell and reach a larger target audience. So growth is all about having the ability to cater to more people bringing in more resources, m making yourself stronger against your competition and trying to blow them out of water with sheer size of the business, that is growth. So it's all about expanding your operations, doing more and more of what you're doing. It increases your ability to produce, which means it increases your ability to sell the products. And one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest motivators for a business to go for growth as a business objective is called economies of scale okay? in simple terms what economies of scale mean is that when a business continues to grow and expand and they keep increasing their output so today i'm making 100 units tomorrow 500 day after 2000 if i keep increasing my output the company will slowly find ways to save their costs automatically and we'll come to economies of scale when we get to that later on. But at this point, just understand that as you keep increasing your output, your average cost of production, making one unit, the cost of that starts coming down further and further and further. And as you know, when your costs go down, your profits go up. And as you increase your output, your sales go up. So both actions will lead to an increase in profits again. So uh, growth will eventually lead to more profits because you're reducing your costs and you're increasing your output. Number four on our list of corporate objectives is increasing market share. And when you hear the term market share, I want you to think of the shape of a pie chart. And how it works is a pie chart is 360 degrees and 100%. And a pie chart divides a total value into different proportions. And what we see here is, let's take an example of, let's say, phone uh, industry, where you have Apple, Nokia, Samsung, Oppo, Huawei, and other businesses. Here we will take just five. And we are given a little bit of data here that in total, when we add these up, there were 900 phones that were sold in, let's say, a one-year period. 
and they've also given us a division of who sold how much of those. Okay? Now in terms of numbers and absolute values, we have that 300 for Apple, 200, but if a business wanted to calculate its market share, okay, they're gonna use this formula to find that out. Now let's say I wanna do it for Apple here. If I use the formula here, I get 300, which is company's own sales, divided by total industry sales given to me as 900 multiplied by 100 because market share is always a percentage value. Okay, do not forget that. So when I solve for this, I know this gives me 33%. So what this means is Apple as a company owns 33% share of the entire market. Nokia, 200 divided by 900, 250 divided by 100 for the other one, so on and so forth, and you can calculate exactly how much each business owns from the entire industry. Now, the reason why businesses would calculate market share is that so they could figure out who their biggest rivals are. And if you look at our example here, we can easily deduce that it's surely Samsung and Nokia that have the biggest pardon me, second and third biggest share. So that makes them the biggest rivals to Apple. And all businesses would wanna keep an eye on their competitive environment. The businesses around them selling similar products. What are they up to? Are they increasing in number? Are they getting bigger? And if anyone get closer, that's the cue for a business to do something about it. And that's where you will take actions to increase your customer base. Perhaps Apple will put a discount, they will take out a new product, offer a new service, anything to attract more customers and try to take those customers away from Nokia. And just watch closely on the pie chart here, what happens as a result is if Apple tries to attract more customers and tries to increase its market share, What's going to happen is, yes, you will end up having more customers, but at the same time, you will eat into your competitor's clientele. Okay? Let's say Apple was able to increase another five. So this becomes three or five, for example. Maybe they took that out of Huawei. So not only did you increase your own share and increase your sales, made more profit, but you also hurt your rivals. So that's something that is always useful when you're looking at market share to determine who to target and who to leave alone. Okay. Of course, sometimes to attract these customers, you may have to reduce your prices. You may see a momentary decline in your profits, but this is just a short-term ploy. In the long term, you will eventually make more profit once you have enough loyal customers. So market share, again, looking to increase your size and trying to hurt the competition at the same time. Number five on our list is profit satisficing. Okay, do not confuse this with satisfying, satisficing. And when you hear this objective, I want you to think of the words contentment, happy, satisfied, just comfortable. And profit satisficing is that objective where the owner says, look, I dedicate X number of hours in a day. That's all I wanna do. I make X number of products, that's the maximum that I'm willing to produce. That, so it sets itself a limit. Like, this is how I'm gonna work, this is what I'm, I'm going to do, this is the number of products I'm going to make. And whatever money I make, I'm just gonna make enough to have a comfortable life. It should be enough for me to mm, sh clothe myself, provide me shelter, have a few vacations, pay off my bills, and as long as all my basic needs are being met, I am in the objective of profit satisficing. So look at this happy man here. We all, we would all like to be him, of course. Money's coming in, gold bars under your feet, and that's a comfortable life, just enough profits. Okay, these are businesses that will tend to remain small. Usually family businesses would be like that, small sole trader partnerships would be such businesses. And the idea is for the owner to stay remain, still remain in control of their business. Whatever operations, as long as they manage it, they will stay small and retain control in the business. And one of the real advantages of small businesses is that they have direct link with the customers. 
and the employees that they work with. And often one of the uh, criticisms customers is given, they go to a store, they don't really see the owners there, who do you complain to, who do you give your feedback to? But in profit satisfying, the owners would mostly be there. So they can offer you that personal touch that other larger businesses, which would have grown and probably looking for profit maximization, may not be able to provide. So just making enough profit to be comfortable and be living a happy life. So we've discussed a number of objectives that a business would choose between, of course, all of these objectives cannot be implemented at the same time. You may either be surviving or looking for profit maximization. So it'll be one or the other. And the businesses will go through different stages in their life. And at different stages, they will see different objectives being more suitable because of the situation that they find themselves in. Okay? Now, of course, we discussed that recession or any change in economic conditions is one situation where a business will look to adapt and change their business environment. If it's a recession, of course, that's when you survive. If there's boom, go for growth, go for profit maximization. That's changes in economic conditions. Of course, all businesses, or most businesses rather, will get out of their introduction phase, out of their survival phase, and then look to maximize and be a bigger business. Some businesses will obviously not survive and die right after. But once you get out of the survival phase, you need to give yourself a new target. Which way do I go? And that's where you will also decide upon a new business objective. And once, let's say you set yourself target, oh, I want to increase my market share. And you set yourself the target and achieve it. Once that is done, then look for something else. For example, once you've increased your market share, that means you've got enough customer base built up. Now change to profit maximization because now is the time to earn your reward for the patience and start making profits. And to understand all of this, I want you to look at this little graph here. And what we see here is a typical cycle through which a business goes. Okay, there will be a startup situation where the sales are not very high, you're still incurring a lot of expenses and still trying to find your feet. And at that time, surely survival is the way to go. Once you find your feet and the sales starts coming in, as time moves along, that's where you start making your money, starting for growth and things like that. Maybe at a time where eventually sales will slow down, and this will happen for all businesses, maybe when it's your, at your peak of sales, maybe you're just happy with your current state. Increase your customers, don't go for profits, and try to maintain this level. Or if you're afraid you're gonna go to decline, maybe not worry the customer so much, don't ask them for extra ch charges, extra prices, and just be happy in your current situation, profit satisfying. You worked hard, you've reached a certain point, maybe it's time to just eat the rewards of that labor. And finally, all businesses will go and decline. Okay, this is true for all. Some may do it in a two year period, some may do it in a 10 year period, some may decline in 40 years, but every business will see this progression in their life. And if you're going in decline, of course, this is where you need to breathe, breathe new life into your company. But until that happens, perhaps you need to reduce your prices, go a little efficient in your operations meaning survival again becomes an option for business in decline. So different stages will require different decisions to be made by the business and a, a business's ability to adapt to these different changes will dictate their success in the long term. And that long term success is directly linked with the long term aim of the business. So in the end, I'd just like to conclude by saying that yes, these are a lot of different objectives that a business has to consider. They have to look at what their situation is internally, what the economic situation is externally, and then come to a decision as to which one is the best objective going forward. But they have certain hints, certain clues that they can use to determine what's the best objective at that moment for a business. And these five factors that you see on the screen are the different checkpoints that a business can use to see which objective is most viable. Starting with, first, determining whether you're a public or a private sector business. Of course, if you're a public sector business, you are run by the government and social welfare and things like CSR would be part of your objective as compared to a private sector business whose objective it is to make profit, so profit maximization. 
number of years in operations as we saw in the previous slide that early years you will look to survive and the later years then you can look towards growth or even increasing your market share the corporate culture of a business the way collectively people behave in the organization what their beliefs are what their common norms are so if they believe they're a business that wants to be more about helping the society that wants to be more about delivering to more customers that's where you're looking at csr or increasing your market share the size and form of business now of course a sole trade or a partnership would find it difficult to expand or grow quickly or even maybe look to increase their market share too much and they might simply be happy with surviving or profit satisfying within a certain local area and finally ethical code so ethics are like your code of conduct, the ability to choose between right and wrong and doing the right thing every time is it every time is called ethical behavior. And a business if a business wants to be ethical, then they will take part in CSR. They will if they increase their market share, they will look to do so by decreasing the price of the product and not increasing it. So different different ways to decide for a business which objective is best for the coming future.